Well, hello folks, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian, and today we're gonna to be talking about this Power Queen Premium 2 Mini Battery. So Power Queen has come out with their version of the compact style lithium iron phosphate batteries. And this little guy right here is coming in at $329 on Amazon as of today, which equates to around 26 cents a watt hour, which is pretty good deal in my opinion. Uh, most of these batteries are between 24 and 26 a watt hour. So I use this as a backup battery to my current battery that's in my RV unit. So I keep it in storage and I always bring this with me when I go to pick up my RV or we go out on a trip just in case something catastrophic happens to my current standard RV battery. I've got this in my truck and it is very small it doesn't weigh as much as a regular 100 amp hour battery so i always have a spare battery with me just to get me home to use my electric tongue jack pull in my slide if just if something bad happens i always have this one of these batteries with me so that's why i like these tiny little form factors and speaking of form factors let me just kind of show you here is a standard 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and when i put this next to it hopefully you can tell that it is much less wide than the standard 100 amp hour battery. It's much shorter and lengthwise than a standard 100 amp hour battery. And it is about half an inch taller, which it still fits in my current battery box so that it does not present any type of issues. And this battery weighs about 27 pounds. This battery weighs 19 pounds. So it is a much smaller, much lighter battery to lug around and doesn't take up as much room in the back of my truck to keep it as a backup battery. So let's get that on the ground and go over just a few things of this battery before I show you my testing. So of course you're gonna get a bunch of paperwork with the battery. Um, can't forget the stickers that you're gonna get. But again, another really good user manual and some people kind of might write that off, but I, it, to me, it shows that this company actually cares about their product because this is a very good user manual. It's written in very well English. I couldn't find any mistakes on it. And it again, it gives you all of the charging parameters that you're gonna need to set up your solar charge controller so you don't damage this battery. And it also goes into great detail on how to connect in series, how to connect in parallel, how to connect in series parallel. Just a lot of good information in this owner's manual. So. Kudos to Power Queen for actually putting in a little bit of time and effort into their user manual. Back to the basics. Again, 100 amp hour battery, 1280 watt hours. I did a, a DC discharge test on this thing and I was able to get around 104 amp hours actually pulled out of it. So I got more than the rated 100 amp hour rating, which theoretically actually reduces the price of this battery um, if, you, if you look at it that way, but we're, we're gonna stick to 26 cents a watt hour. But it does have a continuous max discharge of 100 amp. However, this thing does have a 250 amp surge max for about five seconds, which for a battery of this size is quite incredible. Um, it poses a little bit of an issue for me because if you're gonna have this battery hooked up to what you're typically gonna be running a smaller battery like this, you're not gonna have the right cabling to support 250 amps. Something's gonna go wrong in that whole scenario, but this battery can handle up to 250 amps for a brief period of time. And I'll show that to you here coming up in the test that I did. And it kind of shocked me. It is IP65 water rated. So what that means is this can survive jets of water spray from any angle. And the best way to think of that is rain. So if this is out in the rain, it's not in a battery box on the front of your RV or in a storage compartment somewhere and it rains on it, you're gonna be fine. You can't dunk it in water, you can't throw it in the lake and expect it to, to be working fine after that. But think of IP65 more or less as it gets completely rained on, you're gonna be just fine. And you can operate this thing between negative four and 140 degrees ambient temperature. So if you're out in the Sierra desert and it's 138 degrees outside, you can operate this battery. If you're way up north in Michigan somewhere and it is bone chilling cold, you can operate this battery down to negative four. This does not have a low temp temperature cutoff feature built into it, so you can't charge it, or you can, it is not recommended to charge this battery below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That is one thing I wish this battery had was a low temp cutoff feature built into it, but it doesn't. So just be careful if you're up north and it's cold, 
don't charge this guy below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It is connectable up to a 400 amp hour system or a 48 volt system, depending on if you want to go series or parallel connection. So you can hook up more than one of these, or of course, just use them as a standalone 100 amp hour battery. And Power Queen rates this at 4,000 cycles to 100% depth of discharge before you're going to see any decrease of capacity on these internal pouch cells and you're gonna get 6,000 cycles to 80% depth of discharge or 15,000 cycles to 60% depth of discharge. So moral of the story, if that means nothing to you, do not, if you can help it, don't deplete this battery all the way down to empty, to, to where it shuts itself off. If you can just use a little bit at a time and then recharge it back up, this battery is gonna last you for 10 years if you don't go all the way down to empty. So don't run the tank dry on these batteries if you can help it and you're going to get a much longer lifespan. They also do not claim that this is a starter battery, so don't go hook this up to your Ford truck and expect it to actually turn it over. It's not what it's intended for. This is rated for a trolling motor, however, and I get a lot of questions on if these batteries can operate or run a trolling motor, and this is recommended for a tro trolling motor between 30 and 70 pounds. So yeah. You fishermen out there can use this in that scenario if your trolling motor is between 30 and 70 pounds. And it comes with a five year warranty. So not a bad deal for a battery of 330 bucks. Now, with all that aside, let me switch clips and show you what I found out during the inverter testing and testing out this battery and the internal BMS. So my least favorite test with these again is running the inverter test because it's so hot here in Texas and I'm using a heat gun. But to test out the 100 amp BMS on this battery, I'm gonna be using around 100 amp draw with my heat gun. Now this can go over 100 amps for a brief period of time and we'll test that, but I wanna make sure that this can run at least 100 amps for 10 minutes without any issues. So again, 100 amp BMS, this is a 2500 watt inverter. So the BMS should actually go first before this inverter. A lot of times it's backwards. If you don't have a big enough inverter, it's gonna cut off before the battery does. But in this case, we're flip-flopped, 100 amp BMS, 2500 watt inverter. So I'm gonna open up my Victron Shunt app and show you the current state of charge on this battery, which you can see here is 87%. I'm sitting at 13.2 volts. I'm gonna cut on the inverter. We are at 120 volts. And I'm gonna get this heat gun started to get as close to around 100 amps as I can for a solid 10 minutes. So starting off kind of slow, around 47 amps. Let's kick it up. And right now we're hovering around 96 amps. Let me see if I can dial this in just a hair to get to 100. Oh, there we go. There's 100.17 amps. And it's gonna kind of fluctuate a little bit, but I'm gonna keep it here and I'm gonna let this thing run for 10 minutes and come back and check to make sure everything is working properly and nothing's on fire. And we'll check back in in 10 minutes. Okay, gang, so we're actually past 10 minutes. We're getting closer to 11 minutes now. I'm gonna stop the stopwatch. I'm going to make a screen recording and I'm gonna pull up the Victron Shunt app again. And you can see here, we're actually now pulling 102.4 amps. I'm down to 12.47 volts on the battery, but the battery did not shut off and it actually looks like it was running for more than 100 amps for more than 10 minutes. So I'm gonna cut the heat gun off because it's brutally hot. The fans on my inverter are going. My positive lug is at 111.6. So overall, not too, not too hot. The, the cables are warm to the touch, of course, because I was pulling over 1200 watts with these, with these cables. Overall, it, you know, it, it, worked, it worked fine. It worked well, it worked great, actually. Um, I can't ever imagine a situation where I'm going to personally want to pull over 1200 watts for a solid, 11 minutes. I just wouldn't do that personally, especially if I knew that I was running a battery of this size. I would be more cognizant of what I what my power draw was, but this battery could handle it without any issue. So good job on Power Queen. 
Okay, so now let's see what we can push this battery to. Um, we're sitting at 74% state of charge. Again, 13.2 volts. I still got my heat gun connected. So let's get this inverter cut on. Start it out kind of slow. Turn it up. I'm just gonna turn this heat gun all the way to full. 123 amps. And that's as much as I can get that heat gun to. I'm gonna plug in my incandescent light bulb array, maybe if I got room. hundred and fifty six amps almost hundred and sixty amps nineteen hundred and forty watts being pulled out of this battery right now let me try see if I can get a space heater or something because that's not gonna be enough to trip that right now oh okay fifteen hundred watt space heater start it on low hundred and seventy amps crank up the heat 190 amps. Let me click this thing up all the way to high. And I'm down to 105 volts right now. 228 amps. And it is not happy. There, we just shut off. I was able to pull 200 and almost 30 amps out of this battery. But to be honest with you, I don't know if it was the inverter that was shutting itself down or if it was the actual Power Queen battery. Okay, so I had to do a little bit of investigating to figure out what went wrong there. Not that anything went wrong. I pulled almost 233 amps off of that setup. But according to Power Queen, this battery has a max discharge of 250 amps for about five seconds. I didn't quite get up to 250 amps, so what I think happened was the inverter actually got overpowered and shut itself down before the battery did. But from that test, I can tell that this battery is capable of getting up to probably 250 amps for a brief period of time, because I was running 220 amps pretty solidly before my inverter cut off. So again, 100 amp continuous output on this battery up to 250 amps for a brief surge period of time which apparently does work and i'm hoping i didn't fry my inverter so that's it that's my review on this battery not much else to go over i was pretty impressed with the battery it discharged like it should and got up to around 230 amps before my inverter actually shut down. So it can support up to the max surge that it's rated for. Again, I don't recommend going that high, but if you have to in a pinch, this little tiny battery will support up to 250 amps. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the only thing I wish this battery had was a low temp cutoff feature. It doesn't. Um, and icing on the cake would be a Bluetooth functionality built into this battery so you could actually log into it and check your state of charge. But that's just kind of me being bougie, I guess, because I guess I'm getting spoiled with some of these batteries that have Bluetooth. But that's not a, that's not a deal killer at all for me that this doesn't have it. And I just, again, I love how small these things are and how easy they are to move in and out of my truck on a camping trip to use basically as an emergency type battery if I ever need it. But gang, that's it for my Power Queen Premium 2 battery. Hope you enjoyed the test and the review and we will see you soon. Take care.